My study was on um, parasite burdens of orphan greater one horn rhino um, juveniles and carps, and then trying to compare that to um, wild rhinos in Kazaranga National Park in India. So, um, sorry, I basically put my poster on, so it's a bit busy. <laughs> um, so, basically, I spent three weeks working with rhino poo, um, <laughs> which is great fun. <laughs> um, so every year um, there's floods in uh, Kazaranga National Park and uh, rhino car calves can be orphaned or separated from their mother. So these are picked up by um, the Centre for Wildlife and Research Con uh, Conservation in um, Assam. Um, and there they're kept at the centre where they're rehabilitated and released into a neighbouring national park aged three and a half to four years. Um, so I looked at three different groups. I looked at calves, who were that year's orphans, and then um, sub-adults, who were 30 months to three years, and then compared that with uh, wild samples um, using a flow tap method, which is sensitive to uh, five eggs per gram, and a fluke finder to look for flukes. Um, so what I found were that parasites infections were um, prevalent in 100% of the wild samples. They all had uh, paranfostomum, this um, rumen fluke, and 96% uh, of them had strong gal infections, which is equivalent to, um, sorry, and 94% of the um, sub-adults also had strong gal infections. And when I did the egg count, there was no difference between wild and sub-adult captive. Um, the calves, however, had um, a lower frequency of infection and lower egg counts. But this is probably to the fact that um, they're being bottle fed rather than um, rather than grazing at, at that point. Um, so these results suggest that um, infection in the setting is common, um, but more extensive sampling, in, including sampling over different seasons, uh, would provide further information on whether um, what effect uh, the parasites are having on captivity. And thanks to AWF for funding this.